So it's it's hilarious that the very, not hilarious, it's sad that s people who are trained in the scientific community to have the tools to explore this world, to be children, to be the most effective at being children, uh, are the ones that resist being children the, the most. But there is a large number of people that embrace the childlike wander about the world and may not necessarily have the tools to do it. That's the more general public. And so, you know, I wonder if I could ask you and, and talk to you a little bit about, you know, UFO sightings. That there's people, you know, quote unquote believers, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of UFO sightings. And, you know, I've, I've you know, uh, consumed some of the things that people have said about it. And uh, one, one thing I really like about it is how excited they are by the possibility, uh, by, it's it's almost like this childlike wonder about the world out there. They're not, uh, it's not a fear, it's an excitement. Do you think, because we're talking about uh, this extra, possibly extraterrestrial object that visited, that flew by Earth, do you think it's possible that out of those hundreds of thousands of UFO sightings, one is an actual, one or some number is an actual sighting of a non-human, some alien technology, and that we're not, uh, we did not, we're too close-minded to, uh, to look and to see? I think, to answer this question, we need better evidence. Um, my starting point, as I said, out of modesty, is that we are not particularly interesting. <laughs> yes. And therefore, I would, <laughs> I, agree I would be hard pressed to imagine that someone wants to really spy on us. Uh, so I would think, you know, as a starting point, that we don't deserve attention and we shouldn't expect someone, to, but who knows? Now, the problem that I have with UFO sighting reports is, that you know, 50 years ago, there were some reports of fuzzy images, you know, saucer-like uh, things. Uh, by now, our technologies are much better. Our cameras are much more sensitive. These fuzzy images should have turned into crisp, clear images yes. of things that we are confident about. And they haven't turned that way. It's always on the borderline of believability. And because of that, I believe that it might be most likely artifacts of our instruments yes. or some natural phenomena that we are unable to understand. Yeah, now, yeah. of course, the reason you, you need, you must examine those, if, for example, pilots report about them or uh, the military finds evidence for them, is because it may pose a national security threat. If another country has technologies that we don't know about, and they're spying on us, we need to know about it. And therefore we should examine everything that looks unusual. But to associate it with an alien life is a little too far for me until we have evidence that stands up to the level of scientific credence, you know, that, that we are 100% sure that, you know, from multiple detectors and, you know, through a scientific process, now, again, if the scientific community shies away from these reports, right. we will never have that. It's like saying, I don't want to take photographs of something because I know what it is, then you will never know what it is. But I think if, if some scientists, if grants, let's put it this way, if funding will be given to scientists mm -hmm. to follow on some of these reports and use scientific instruments that are capable of detecting those sightings with much better resolution, with much yes. better information. That would be great because it will clarify the matter. You know, these are not, as you said, you know, hundreds of thousands, these are not uh, once in a lifetime events. Yeah. So it's possible to take scientific instrumentation and explore, go to the ocean where the, you know, someone reported that there are frequent uh, events that are unusual mm -hmm. and check it out, yeah. do a scientific experiment. What's the problem? Why not? Why only do experiments deep into the ocean and look at the ocean, ocean, oceanography or, or do other things? You know, we can do scientific investigation of these sightings and figure out what, what they mean. Yes. Uh, I'm very much in favor of that, uh, but until we have the evidence, I would be doubtful as to what they actually mean. Yeah, we'll have to be humble and, uh, and acknowledge that we're not that interesting. 
it's kind of you you're making me realize that because it's so taboo that the people that have the equipment uh meaning and when i was just talking everybody has cameras now but to have a large scale like uh sensor right. network, network that collects data that right. regularly collects just like we look at the weather we're exactly. collecting information and then we can then access that information when there is reports and like have it not be a taboo thing where there's like millions or exactly. billions of dollars funding this effort yeah. that by the way inspires millions of people this is right. exactly what you're talking about is like is yeah. is uh the scientific community is afraid of a topic that inspires millions of people exactly. it's absurd it's but if you put blinders on your eyes you don't see it <laughs> yeah right i should say that uh, we do have meteors that we see these are rocks that by chance happen to collide with the earth mm -hmm. and they if they're small they burn up in the atmosphere but if they're big enough, uh, tens of meters or more, hundreds of meters, the outer layer burns up, but then the core of the object mm -hmm. makes it through. And this is our chance of putting our hands around an object <laughs> if this meteor came from interstellar space. So one path of discovery is to search for interstellar meteors. And mm -hmm. with a student of mine, we actually looked through the record and we thought that we found one example of a meteor that was reported that uh, might have come from interstellar space. Oh, and uh, another approach is, for example, to look at the moon. Mm -hmm. The moon is different from the Earth in the sense that it doesn't have an atmosphere. So objects do not burn up on their way to it. It's sort of like a museum. It collects everything that comes. Of rocks from out there in yeah. deep space, yeah. And there is no geological activity on the yeah. moon. So on Earth, every 100 million years, you know, we could have had computer terminals on Earth that could have been a civilization like ours <laughs> with electronic equipment yes. more than 100 million years ago, and it's completely lost. You cannot excavate and find it, yeah. evidence for it, because in archaeological digs, because the Earth is being mixed mm -hmm. on these timescales, and everything that was on the surface more than 100 million years ago is buried deep inside the Earth right now because of geological activity. Fascinating to think but, about, by the way, yeah. But on the moon, this doesn't <laughs> happen. The only yeah. thing that happens on the moon is you have objects impacting the moon and they go 10 meters deep, so they produce some dust. Mm -hmm. But the moon keeps everything. It's like a museum. It keeps everything on the surface. So if we go to the moon, I would highly recommend regarding it as an archaeological site yes. and looking for objects that are strange. Maybe it collected some trash, you know, from yeah. interstellar space. <laughs>